Hello, and we're live again. Welcome to uh, SMD, Surface Mount Pick and Place, Carousel, Storage, Stroke, Assembly, or Pick and Placement of Electronic Components onto a PCB that has previously been solder paste stenciled. It's ready to go into the reflow oven, so uh, pick and place components. Anyway, I've made one or two changes. Uh, we're we're going to go and do today the uh, middle tiers, and we've got a few changes to do. Um, having milled out the base one, which I showed yesterday, having milled this one out, the bottom base layer. And it works. So, yeah, it's ready. There you go. Yeah, it sort of spins everything. There's a few mistakes. I'll quickly go over them. Um, I tried to mill too fine a cut for some rubber, rubber feet there. And you can see there I've gone straight through. So you've got um, a 10 mil pocket. 12 mil material and a one mil recess for a rubber foot. Well, it would have worked out, but my 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 bed on my CNC behind is not straight. It always perplexed me why. Sorry, let's get that out of the way. It always perplexed me what why it was such a brilliant machine. Yet yeah, it seems to. It seemed to have a built-in floor from the outset, whereas the bed isn't level. Now, if if this if all the mechanics of this is built, probably milled on a CNC machine to start with, and everything's exacting, how is it possible it can be a mill out from one side of the table to the other? Doesn't seem possible. There's no real adjustment on it. A lot of people, they, they buy a piece of billet aluminium the same size as the bed, about 8 to 10 mil thick, and then they, they bolt it on, drill and tap it, screw it to the bed, and then they go and face off. They face, they face it off. And then they've got a known good standard. But um, I, I, as years go on, I might be getting silly, look at cynical. But I think, I think it was built in. The mistake was built in. I don't know why. Probably getting cynical, but there doesn't seem to be a reason that it's that far out. Anyway, so what I've done is I've changed. I've turned the, I've turned the spoil board upside down, and I've put some cardboard, a couple of card pieces of thin card on top of each other and I've gone round it with a piece of plastic I've pushed pushed the bit down onto that lightly and I've gone round the surface and uh, to see how tight or how rattly it is I don't want that I don't want a great tolerance on the height but when it when it's tight fit one side and you go the other then it starts doing this it's not good anyway uh, I must invest in a piece of billet aluminium the size of the bed at some point and it'll take me ages to mill it flat so anyway it's not a good thing trying to mill aluminium flat really it'll do aluminium but it's such a such a long time to do and noisy very squealy and noisy so anyway um anyway, i've got it flat as flat as i'm going to get it now, the problem is when you try to clamp it down, you can see the clamps uh, there and there. And if I can get it right down there, it's one on the other side. Now, the clamps, they when you clamp it down, if you clamp too hard, it bends the material, it just warps it like that, it pulls, pulls it. So it's no good. You, you need a vacuum table, really, and you need more accuracy. These things are only, these CNC64s are just designed for 
hobbyists. They're not designed to be, you know, I mean, it's accurate. It's got ball screws on it, so it's able to do fine tolerances. It's great at manoeuvring the X, Y, and Z, but what you what you can't do is you can't rely... It's the same as anything. If you try to build a house on a foundation that's no good, it's, it doesn't matter how good the house is going to be, it's never going to be any good on those bad foundations. So that's basically what you've got here with this. Uh, but I, I just can't work out why it's so bad. Almost. I'd love to I don't, take it apart and analyse it. I, I reckon... One of the pieces has got a floor in it. It must have a floor in it. Whether it's an on-purpose floor, this is where it gets cynical. So they want, to, they want to sell them, but do they want to sell them so you can make stuff as good as anyone else? I don't know. Cynical, isn't it? Anyway, right. So what I'm going to do... Um, I'm not going to go and mill the G-code directly. I'm going to edit the G-code first, as in edit the model, not the actual G-code, because I want to lower the pocket. I don't want to make the pocket 10 mil. I got a bit of um, sort of, I call it blistering. There's supposed to be two mil, two mil of material left on the bottom. This is 12 mil thick, yeah? And the pocket is 10... Pocket is 10 mil. These are 10 mil deep pockets. There should have been two mil left. But because of the bed being uneven, this is higher up and I'm basically milling down. I'm not I've not got two mil left. I've got less than two mil left. And that's no it's okay, but it's no good, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so and there's a, what it is, it's such because it's so thin, you can't see, I tried to show you this yesterday. But if I feel, if I put my hand there and rub around there, you can feel the blisters. That's nice and smooth and flat. Now here, hang on, it's hard to do a reverse thing. See, it's just blistering a bit. It doesn't matter on this one, but on the next tiers, the next tiers, the, this one is on the base, so the blistering is on the bottom where the feet are. So it doesn't matter on that one. But what matters is the what the the tiers between, they've got to be flush with each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce uh the ten mil pocket to nine mil. Shouldn't matter. I'm gonna reduce it to nine mil so we've got potentially three mil. Then if it does go a bit deep, it's still gonna have good at least one point eight mil left. Right, so I've messed around with the bed, so hopefully that might have cured it anyway. So I'm going to have to do the G-code again um, on these. And what else was I going to say? Yeah, so let's just, uh, i tell you what, let's just start. It worked out pretty well yesterday. Uh, oh yeah, I want to speed it up as well. So this first thing I want to do is go into here. The... These are the settings, uh, you can't see that, hold on a minute. I'll bring it down a bit, right, so you've got... This is a sketch you can, part of the flat skip parameters. So I want to... This feed rate and the, plun, the plunge rate's okay. But the feed rate, I need to speed up the feed rate. The problem is uh, it took me two hours, about two and a quarter hours, two hours, twenty minutes, to mill, to mill the one and just take too long you know it's just too long so i'm not i'm not a cnc machinist by no nothing at all i'm just a hobbyist i've let self-taught on this cnc and that's it um so it's a bit of a guessing game really apart from i've milled a few things out anyway um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter the feed rate because the default feed rate was quite high. And what I, what I was trying to do is avoid the bits of plastic sh shooting all over the place. So if you 3D print it, you don't have this trouble. No mess. So, you know, you've got a few fumes, but no mess. Anyway, so... 
Uh, I'll go through the process and I'll just do the middles here. And... Right, I'm going to have a sip of my drink. Sorry, I've been to work all day again. <laughs> oh dear. It's never, never ending. Sorry. It's 20 to 9. I'm already tired. Sorry. Been out in the sun a bit more, too much again. Right. So anyway, we'll get we'll get to the end. I'm just gonna top up my glass before we start off. Got some more of that cider. I didn't have any last week. I thought I'd give it a miss. Um. Right. So I've already positioned the material in the new place on the on the th on the thing. You see my GoPro there behind. Um, that's still got the lag on it. It's going through an HDMI adapter actually. Where is the adapter? It seems to have fallen back. Let me just bring that back up. Right. I need I need to make a I need to make a cu custom shelf here to put all the stuff. It's just hanging precariously. It's terrible. Anyway, get round to it one day. I need a every need <laughs> you need a. A week off work to build all this stuff. We can't add a week off work, but it doesn't. It's not enough. You need another week after you've had a week off before you're ready to do whatever else you want to do. It's a cruel life. It is a cruel life, but anyway, needs must. I suppose you got to got to keep the lights on somehow. So, right. Um, okay. Why have I got a full-size picture of me there? Oh, it's because I was trying to sh show the product. Yes, show it being me, but I don't need this picture in a minute. I need the one of the CNC. Right, so I'm going to have to do a few mods. I'm going to, yeah. Tell you what. Let's just do it now. Let's go back to the main view. Oh, we've got nothing there. Hold on. Um... Uh, display capture, that's better. All right, oh, cut me to the quick. I haven't got rid of my taskbar. Goddamn taskbar. I can see why Microsoft want to get, wants to get rid of that. Anyway, so we're back on here. Right, that's a bit better, isn't it? Oh, what's happening? It's doing a flinch. It's... It's flinching. SketchUp's flinching. Doesn't like have the taskbar moved while it's uh, in f in operation, sort of thing. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I'll try and wake myself up. Hang on. Ugh. Gotta wake up. More more cider. That'll do it. More tea, Vicar. They say more more tea. Anyway, right, so the feed rate, um, now the feed rate, it's where I want it to be to, to make it cut without too much trouble, but I don't want to sit here for two, two hours, 20 minutes cutting this. So let's just change it. Now I forget what the default rate was, so what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to save this now, I'm going to save this. Um whatever all that is, save that. Uh, carousel bottom tier, I don't know, yeah. Carousel bottom tier, new. I hate calling stuff new, because it's not new. It's only new when you do it. Never new after that. Right, so save that. Now try a default setting. Restore the defaults. Now see how the feed rate has gone right up to two. 1,540 in the plunge rate. So I'm going to copy that. Spindle speed's 1,500. Okay, I'll go with that. Now my spindle, it just has hertz coming up. I'm going to plug that in, actually. The spindle just, just comes up with hertz, so it doesn't show you spindle speed. 
which is a bit annoying. Nothing correlates. If you don't, if you do, if you buy a a hobbyist one, it functions sort of, but not exactly. All right, so it's showing me frequency, which is nothing. So I'm starting off. Anyway, so the plunge rate, I'm going to leave the same. Uh, I'm going to cut off, copy that. Right, I'm going to load back in. Uh, select the profile, new. That's it. So I'm bringing that one back in. I'm going to overwrite this one, the feed rate. I can always slow it down a bit on the mill software if if it decides to. If it if it decides to. Right, hang on, I can see what's going on there. I'm capturing too much audio here. Oh, no, it's muted anyway. It's okay. Let's get rid of that input audio capture off my Logitech camera here. Input audio minus. Right, so you just got the mic now, that's better. Yeah, sorry, switching between two, two scenes on OBS. Right, so we've got our feed rate back at default. Spindle speed, it's not 8,000, it makes too much noise. This is the bit I don't know. If I turn the speed up, it's only, it's only plastic. So if I turn it up, it needs to go faster. If I'm going faster, it needs to spin faster. So let's just try that. Let's, I mean, that's not going to affect it anyway, because it's manual. But let's just put it in what the default setting was going to be. Uh, we'll have to turn the spindle up. Yeah, I'm just... I've done all this experiment years ago and stuff, so I know it doesn't... Mind you, the last time I was trying to cut aluminium, so I needed to slow it down. Right, anyway, this is all probably simple stuff to proper machinists, but... Anyway... So material thickness, I'm going to have to say it's 16 mil for a set for a minute. 16 millimeter, because I need to. Actually, it was 15 last time that did okay, didn't it? 15 mil. 15 mil inside, outside, overcut. Okay, that didn't seem to work last time, so that's that. Right, yeah. So I suppose I could set the overcut instead of making the material thickness. Let's try that. Put that back to 12 mil. It'll save it. It'll save a stage. It's 12 millimeter inside, outside, overcut, and that's in percent. One minute you're working in percent, next minute in millimeter. I need to inside, outside, overcut. So uh, let's just work out what the percentage is of the overcut. Right here we go. So we've got uh, 12 millimeter. And I need to get to 15 millimeter. So plus 10% equals 13 now. So 12 plus 25% equals 15. That'll do. So I need to cut, I need to do this 125%. Uh, no, that's, I don't want to do that, do I? No, because it'll cut it all the way down deep. Forget that. Go the way I had it. So I'll change the material thickness to do the first cut to 15 mil. Now the step over. Uh, now my step over. This was confusing. Now it steps over 100%. So it mills out a pocket. Mills the pocket. And it steps over it a hundred percent, seventy percent. I'll change that back to seventy. Actually, we'll save that. We'll save that. And go back to default. Step over is only seventy percent. Okay. Right. Let's just let's have it 70% then. Right, step over, 70%. 70%. 
Uh, inside, outside, overcut, 100%. Alright, okay. That's all the same. Multipaths. Multipass dip there. Go a little bit more with that, couldn't I? 1.2. I need to speed it up a bit. That's 1.2 mil a pass. Let's go to. Let's go 1.5. All right, tabletop is zero, overhead gantry. Yeah, everything else is good, 100%. Okay, 1.5 mil, is that enough? Yeah, it's probably enough. Okay, plunge rate. That's still too fast, that plunge rate. Can I slow that down? Why, why it sets the plunge rate really high? So now, okay. So well, let's do two fifty. Right, two fifty plunge rate. Okay, save that. That's this horrible dialogue box. Horrible bit of code on this Ruby script, whatever it is. Anyway, I probably need to move to a different tool or a different software. Uh, but I like to use it with SketchUp, so that's, that's why I got this add-on. Okay. Right, so we've got 20 minutes here, we haven't done anything yet. Right, okay, so we'll leave that feed rate like that. I'm just uh, okay on that. Now, the first one's not going to really matter. But I need to go into this again. Yeah, I need to delete this, don't I? Hang on. Let's get our guides on. Let's delete. Delete this G-code a minute. Rubber and... Okay. Just get hold of that. Got rid of that. Good. Okay, so I'll um, save it. Now, I've got 15 mil, so I need to just... Plot that hole, that needs to go through to 100%. Let's finish saving, so let's do a four, four mil hole 100% through. And then I need to do an inside cut six mil, and these can go 100%. Okay, so they're going to go 12 mil and an extra three mil into the material. Okay. Um, it's not going to mill anything else out here. This is just just for the orientation. So that's the first one. So we'll save that. Uh, we could do go ahead and do that, can we? Now I'll leave that there. That's okay. Uh, right. I put in the save area. Here it is. Snaps to there. Okay, and output this file. Now it's going to be for. So number four, there it is, save. Okay, so we're saving that. More drink, Vicar. Ah, dear. Por torture, torture, torture. Uh, any more um, any more words come out of your mouth? Oh, I'll have to eat, eat every chicken in here. Right. Okay, so that one's done. Now we can have a look at it. Let's just have a look at it, make sure that what the code hasn't gone wild. Just make sure it's doing something what we'd expect. Right, so we're going to mill 60, 15 mil. Plunge there, you know, and mill out the registry holes. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so stop that. That looks good. Right, so I'll go back to the other one. 
Next one down is this one here. Same again. Uh, same again. So I need to select all this and delete the code. Pick out all the routing, all the toolpath out of it. And this again. This boring bit again, sorry. Yeah, because I've changed the percentage of the um, over, whatever they call it. So these might be closer this time. Well, there should, they should be slightly different toolpath, which should be better for me, I would have thought. Oh, dear. I think I need a different tool. It's just a bit too manual. A bit too old school basic. There's bound to be some software now. It might, might be worth paying, learning, and paying for a subscription model and paying. If you do a lot of it, I don't do You know, I go years without doing any. That's the problem. Uh, I signed up to... Um, uh, Fusion 360 for a year under some free thing they do, I can't remember what it was for companies, I think it was for companies but uh, it's already ran out and I, I haven't actually done anything with it so I've lost my year it's a shame isn't it it should go off usage really rather than just a year because I, 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 I need to be at the right time to get into it so anyway we're back to, we're back to where we want to get to there now I did say oh, I'm going to adjust the bin slightly. I don't want the warp on this, so I'm going to have to calculate the bin pocket sizes here. This is going to have to change now. Let's just get the calculator back up. So what I'm after is uh, 12 mil, 12 mil thick, and I need to go. That needs to be a nine mil pocket. So I need to mill out less percentage. So let's have a guess. Minus um, 80%. That's 9.6. Go a bit more. 12 mil minus 75%. 9 mil. Hey, good guess. Hey, good guess. All right. So let's just change that. 12 millimeter minus 75% gives me 9 mil. Just got to change that with that. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Bin pockets there, 75 mil, 9 mils. I don't mind losing a mil, it's okay. Right, spring or bull bearing, plunge. That's 9 mil. Do I need to go 9 mil? Probably not. Should we keep it at 9 mil? Hmm, do I need to go 9 mil? Not really. Not really, so let's um, let's leave it. Should we leave it at that? No, let's change it. Let's change it. Let's go... Oh, let's leave it at 9 mil. Sorry, let's leave it at 9 mil. Swivel bearing centre, that's all exactly the same. Okay, so we've changed that. So let's, let's do the middle pocket first. That was that turned out okay last time. It's thirty-five point four two. Okay, so pocket thirty-five point four two. Okay, and then we want the ball bearing at seventy-five percent. Yeah, ball bearing seventy-five percent. So we need to plunge that. Down at seventy five percent, yeah, and there, okay, right. So that's that bit. Now the bin pockets. What did I say it needs to be? Seventy five percent, because I already had it worked out there. I didn't even need the calculator anyway. Right here we go. Seventy five percent bin pocket. Uh, seventy five 
percent. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's the tool the tool paths slightly different arrangement now. So I'm gonna be doing this fast. Uh, I might have to slow it down. I'm gonna do a test cut about a few mil higher than I need it. So that's that done. Uh, are we cutting it out as well? Yeah, we need to cut it out. When it's finished, we need to cut it out. Then we need to flip it for the bottom. So here we go, cut out. Uh, there we go. That's it, done, that's done. Save that, save it. Okay, so we've got that done. Let's output it to G. Oh, put safe area over it. Safe area over this one now. Line it up with that. That's it. And output to step five. Step five. There it is. Okay. Step five. I have no, I have no clue. If this is how they do it in a proper machine shop. No clue, but presume they do it in steps. Load each file as they do. It's probably all done it's totally different now. Anyway, I suppose uh, it's not my cup of tea. But I mean, sitting there all day milling out stuff for someone else. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, right, so we've done that. And we might as well do the bottom while we're here. Finish the bottom off. So we've got the two lots. We might as well do the lot, haven't we? Right, so it's already been cut out. So all we need to do is flip it over, do the base. The bearing for the bottom and then these holes. So I need to cancel this out a minute. Excuse me. Need to cancel these out, so let's get rub it out again. Okay, I need to just get rid of these. This is these are this is where the ball bearing off the end of the spring. You got spring and ball bearing. This is where what it sits into to to make the jig to make the carousel snap into the next bay exactly. Now. There might be a bit of wobble on this. It's the ball. It's a ball after all. And I've got a four mil hole here. It is it is the smallest I can cut with that same mil bit four mil, so it's gonna have to stay the same. So it it oh I'll just deleted the wrong thing on them. Oh it's one of them, is it? It's one of them that won't let you select the thing. Oh, won't get it. Why not? No, it will. Um, right, so you got get rid of that. Which one do I need? Uh, oh, hang on. Not that one. No. Is that the one? Maybe. No. What a bloody horrible software, right? See, it let me get all the rest. See, just click on it, gone. S people who create SketchUp plugins. Is it my fault? Was it their fault? Oh, it's got it this time. Stupid it. See, the line's weird. It's almost like there's two lines on it. There ain't no. Ah, it's not intersected with the model, that's why. Hang on, let's intersect it with the model. When it does that, it's not intersected with the model. Intersect face. Oh no, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it because that's going to make the surface area wrong. So what I'm going to do is tip it on an angle. This is crazy as a workaround. I need to select that. I need to cut it. Alright, and I need to drop it in there. Paste it. 
Right, I need to raise it up. No, where's the blue axis? Oh, where's the blue gone? Oh, what horrible software. I think it's probably is this 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 it's a steep to get away from SketchUp, it's a steep learning curve. And I don't know if I can put the time into that. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, let's go up. Come on, blue axis. Why don't you go on the blue axis? That's it. What's it doing now? It's raising the whole thing in it. Horrible, horrible bit of software sometimes. Oh, it's gone all silly on me now. Right, hang on. It should be grey if it's... See, if I click in there, there's nothing there. Look. I should be able to do that. Now, it's remembering how to do it. Um... What I've got to do is I've got to cut it. I've got to I've got to lift it up. But if I lift it up, it's just going to pull everything, isn't it? That's what it's doing. Look, it's pulling everything. Horrible bit of software. I'm going to ignore it because it's doing me head in. Uh, right, so I'll just ignore that. Let's get this back here. All right. Okay. So we're back to a blank thing. Let's do the pocket first. The bear ball swivel bearing pocket thirty five point four two. Thirty five point four two. Okay, and now the ball bearing recess point five of a mil. Point five of a mil. This might be a bit of a disaster, but let's try it. Okay, 0.5 of a mil is 4.17%. Uh, and I know I made a mistake as well. Made a mistake on that one. I didn't change the thickness of the material back again. So that's not going to work. I'm going to have to do that again. Or did I? No, I left it at 15 mil, so that's a mistake straight away. Not going well today. Let's finish this one off. Uh, I forgot what I'm doing now. Uh, right, here we go. Car key. Right, I need to ball bearing recess. Half and set 4.17. And that's just going to be a plunge. Uh, this is the bit that I hate. Yeah, you have to... You have to put 4.17 in. Ah, oh, it's no good doing it anyway. It's no good, it's pointless. What I've just done is pointless. Till I change the... Till I change the size of the... Oh, here we go. There you go. It's most annoying, this software. Till I get this thickness right, all oh, this is pointless. Right, so I'll leave that a minute. Right, that's the only thickness I needed at 15 mil. The rest is 12 mil. It's just so we could get the registry holes milled. So now I put these pockets in. Now I can't, do I trust it? Now let's change the material to 12 mil. 12 millimeter. Okay. Now we're going to have to cancel this out again now. I don't know enough about it where, whether we've got to cancel it out or whether it'll mill the depth. It might do the depth, but then it's the bit diameter. I don't know. Anyway, let's go back to the start again. Sorry. Crazy, crazy this. Hang on. Right, let's get rid of this again. Jesus. Anyway, um, I'm beginning to wonder whether this carousel is worth the trouble. To, 
I spent two weeks design changing the design. It looks like it's going to take a week to mill it out. Is it even worth the bother? It's best to just chuck fifty pound at someone and buy one, but you can't buy one. I don't. I haven't seen one. I haven't seen one. Maybe three D printer. That's probably why people use three D printing because it's just so much easier. And uh, you can just let it run, and it'll. What's the worst that can happen? It run out of. Run out of um. Whatever the feed is called. Can't remember what the feed's called on it now. The rock. Oh, I've just done a mistake there. Get off there. Right. Okay, so hang on. Gotta get rid of this. Right, so back to square one. Save that. Right. Now the material's the right thickness now. Now we've got to just go through that again when it's finished saving. Come on, you slow drive. Right, um, pocket size, Spri swivel bearing in the centre, 35.42. Okay, now the 75% plunge on the spring housing. Okay, and we want a 75% on there as well. So 75% on the pocket size to give us 9 mil. Right, here we go. We'll be there in a minute. Okay. Right, nice. And now we want to do... Inside an outside cut now. There it is. Lovely. Save that. Okay. Okay. Now bring the safe area over top of here again. It's already there by the looks of it. Uh, output the code, and it's number five. Number five in the list, where are you going? There. Number five. Then we'll go back to number six, or we'll forward to number six. Ah, oh dear. Okay. So number five is okay, let's do number six. Right, six. We haven't got a mill out all that. Let's cut that out. We've got to flip it over. Got to do another bearing cut. So a pocket in the middle for the bearing 35.42%. Bang. Then we've got to plunge down half a mil, 4.17. Tell you what, I'm just going to go 4%. percent it would be less than half a mil, but that'll save me having to type 4.17. Because for some reason, the plunge, you have to keep typing it in as you do it. So, 4%, bang. And it's gone back to 100% now, so 4%, bang. 4%, bang. Right, bang. Reminds me of typing in... Hexadecimal code out of a games magazine from the 80s. Very laborious and not able to take your eye off the ball because one mistake will mess the whole thing up. 4% bang. 4%. So why, why it doesn't default to 4% and keeps going back to 100%? 4%. Someone's idea of a joke, or I suppose a plunge tool is really to just go straight through the material. 4% bang. 4% bang. 4% bang. This is crazy. 4% bang. 4% bang. 
four percent bang. Now this is gonna be the bugger, it's not gonna have this one, is it? Oh it might do. At four percent bang. Four percent bang. Four percent bang. Yeah, the plunge tool's none too fussy. If it was a pocket tool, if it wasn't intersected with a model, it wouldn't have it wouldn't appear. You can't plunge. Can't do can't do a pocket on something the same size as the bit. It doesn't work. Or it won't allow you for some reason. Bang. Anyway, I didn't write this, but I mean G code. I bet there might be a better way of doing it. This flat flat script or might there might be a better way of doing this. And it's been a few years since I found this tool. Uh, SketchUp's gone commercial. The very latest versions of SketchUp have gone commercial. So maybe somebody, because it's commercial, somebody's decided to rewrite it or write a better one. Okay. So that's that. I certainly have. I'll, I'll probably have a search for that. Save again. And. Okay. Send out the G code. Oh no, that's not going to work. Got to put my safe area over this first. Right, that will work now. And send the G code out, and this is going to be number six. Number six. Where are you? Tiers lower. Tiers lower. Oh yeah, the lower part of the middle tiers. Yeah. Save. Okay, so why have I got uh, seven steps? Now they're going to be for the cover, aren't they? Okay. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten steps. Okay, so I've got enough there to do these three. So let's send these, send these to a memory stick now. Uh, where are they? So one, two, three, four. Um, that's the right date. Five and six. Oops. Four, four, five and six. Copy, and they're all today's date, about the same time. Yeah. Okay. Send it to this file here. Replace. Okay. We've got four, five, and six. Let's, before we go and mill it, we know that one was okay. So let's do four was okay. Let's do five. Okay, that's five. Does that look about right? I think it does. Let's just zoom in, see how many... How many passes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight passes. So it's one pass left, less, and we're doing it faster. So anyway, right, next one is the turn it over, number six. Holes and the pocket, yeah, looks good. Right, let's get rid of that a minute. And what I need you to do now is switch you back on to... The camera, let's do that. Uh, video capture device. There it is. There's a the video capture. Okay. Uh, hmm. Hang on, do we want to go on that one? No, hang on. That one, video capture. Okay, that, that'll probably do. It's a pity I'm showing all this, isn't it? Why, why am I doing that? I don't know. Let's just have a shuffle around with this, isn't it? Okay. Let's keep it in the view, that'll do. Okay. Right. 
So we're on the uh, CNC behind now. See if we got a nice lag. Yeah, we got a nice lag still. Right, let's uh, take the memory stick out. Put the memory stick. Memory stick in the computer. Turn the mic around like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, load the G code. So you can see, you can see the gantry twice actually. You can see it there. You can see it there. And you can see it down there. So yeah. You can see when my head's not in the way. Right. So tiers, upper registries. That's the one. Number four. Hang on, let's just go into it, make sure we get that number four. Okay, so it's going to do registers again. And we're going to, we're expecting the bit to go down 15 mil through the 12 mil plastic and 3 mil into the spoil board. I've already, I've already zeroed it out. So um, I'll regenerate the tool path. I'll go to Z. Okay, spindle's not spinning yet. We'll see, regenerate the tool path. Okay, start the spindle up. Now, I have told it the bit's going to be going faster, so I need to increase the speed. Right, I'm going to increase the speed now. Uh, I can't, I don't know what it's supposed to be, so. Well, that's sort of full speed, that is. That's full speed, so I might have to alter this. It might just melt it. It might not cut at too fast a speed. This is the bit I don't know. Trial and error. No problem is I can't do trial and error. I should do it on a scrap bit of plastic, really. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to raise the Z up. It's a pity I've already set it in it. I'll cut this out because this won't take long. Right, we're ready to go. Um, let's just go for it, ready? Here we go. Let's see what kind of mess it makes. It's just going to cut five holes out. Um, I can't see this, but I've got my mouse over the stop in case it all goes crazy. Right, that looked okay. Yeah. These are six mil holes to allow me to flip the piece and also part of the model anyway. There's a bit, bit of smoke coming up, bit of smell coming off it when it goes into the spoil board. Should really be all plastic and spoil board, but right, that's finished that bit. That's nice of it to back off as well, isn't it? Right, that's done. So, um, uh, load the next lot of G code. Which is five upper tiers. It is five, isn't it? Yeah. Now, uh, this might be too fast. So, 
Let's just go for it. Right, we're just gonna. It might be too fast. I can either raise the Z and do it in mid air and see what it looks like for speed, or just go for it. Let's just go for it. I'm, I'm, what's the word? Pass caring. No, not pass caring, but. Anyway, so let's go to Z. Go to Z. Oops. Go to Z. Regenerate the tool path. Doesn't really need it, but do it anyway. Okay, and here we go. Ready for cycle start. Here we go. I can, I can slow the speed down this end if it's too fast. I want it to be fast because I want to sit here for hours. Right, here we go. It's going to be too fast, probably. Probably make a right ball, so I'll put, it'll probably move the material and everything. Ah, I'll tell you what I haven't done. I'm going to put my pegs in. I've got some pegs to put through the spoil board. I'll drop these into the spoil board. Through, and this will help hold it still. So I haven't tightened my clamps up. To ho I need um, a vacuum table, really. That's a bit dangerous to me. Put my arm right by the spindle while it's on. Okay, have I got one more? Probably not. Probably enough. Yeah, three's enough. Okay. Yeah, so that should hold its... I thought we had four. Where have we gone? No, I haven't got four. Right, um... Let's just do it then. These pegs... These pegs will just, um, they'll just hold, hold it as well. Stop it uh, sliding around if it does go too fast. If, if it moves faster than it cuts, it'll try to push the workpiece. Right, here we go then. Cycle start. Here goes nothing. Okay. No idea what it's going to do first. It's doing the bearings. No, so it's doing the spring and ball bearing holes. I should sit here really with the uh, the vacuum on. It's probably got a right, a right old mess. So I should have got the vacuum ready really. And I haven't got the vacuum ready. Bad move on my phone. Going, it's going very fast. I want it to go fast, so I don't want to sit here for hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking that so far. Sorry about the noise. Can't be helped. That's much faster than the, the other day. <laughs> so hopefully it shouldn't take that long. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah, I like that. That was out and too bad, actually. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. I'll do a few more, then uh, I'll craft the live stream on the head. About an hour in anyway.
and I'll take some video footage as it progresses. But it's basically the same as what we had yesterday, but faster. Uh, it's turned out okay. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and I'll come back to it. Thanks for watching. I've been Dave from UPath. And I'll probably come back with a few videos. I'm going to leave it at that and I'll talk to you again. Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now. I've got to be careful. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.